So these, these, are, the, these are the fundamentals of statistics. Can't do much stats unless you start measuring something. And in user research, you're going to start measuring. Um, and whatever metric you take, whether it be in a usability test, or whether it be in a survey, um, whether it be in a site visit, you're going to need to quantify that. And the quantification is going to fall on this continuum, from continuous all the way to discrete. Um, now, discrete basically means this is where you've got the conversion rates and the completion rates, binary completion rates, binary conversion rates. Did they complete the task? Did they not complete the task? Did they convert? Did they purchase? Did they not? Zeros and ones, zeros and ones. We're somewhat limited in what we can do with the ones and zeros, and there's, there's more complicated procedures that we have to deal with. And that's a one big distinction. And then all at the other end is what's generally referred to as continuous data, and that's where you get task time. It's called continuous because you can subdivide it into theoretically smaller and smaller units. So you have a minute, and you can measure 30 seconds, 15 seconds, one second, half a second. Um, you need a smaller sample size for continuous data, and, and there's, again, the different statistical procedures to use. Um, then we've got sort of everything that falls in between. Questionnaire data is not really purely continuous, but it often can be treated that way, and we will do that pretty liberally today. Then you've got things like errors and user assistance or help. Did people contact the help desk? Did they not contact the help desk? Things fall somewhere in between, and so Jim and I, through the research and the best procedures, are going to show you which test to use. Okay, so you can't talk to anybody about statistics without hearing the word parameter and statistics mentioned. Um, so just a, just a quick review of what those definitions are. A parameter is, is what, how we measure the population. So population is the whole subset. And it doesn't have to be just a population of people. It, population in this sense are defined often by what they do. If you have users that do different tasks, it's really a different population than having those same users do um, another set of tasks on a different product. Um, or even novice users is or, or one set of population. Measure the average of the population, average time, average com uh, completion rate, average response to a questionnaire of the whole population. Those are called parameters. They use these nice little Greek symbols that you forget what they mean all the time. This is for the mean, this is for the standard deviation. But we rarely have access to everybody in the population. Instead, we have to take a sample, some subset. And in that sample, the at these values, these statistics, estimate the unknown parameters. So we use the sample mean, this x bar, the sample standard deviation, how variable it is, to, um, to estimate these unknown parameters. Okay. All right, so I, I've talked about sampling, and I think Jim and I, every time we talk statistics, usability, user research, the first thing that comes up is, well, you can't use statistics with small samples. Everybody knows that, right? Um, and so again, this is a thing we're going to come back to, but from a high level, you should think of, of statistics and using statistics like tasting soup, determining if it's ready. So I've got Julia Child up here. Um, it would be nice if we could always take a giant ladle full, full of soup and taste the salinity, see if it's hot enough, see if the ingredients are there. But we can't always get that large. We can get like maybe a small eyedrop or even a tiny teaspoon. Assuming the soup's well stirred, we have some idea, a pretty reasonable idea, whether or not the soup is done. And the same applies to uh, sampling people, behaviors, attitudes in general. There's no point at which you can and can't do statistics, just like there's no point at which you can and can't do cooking. It's just the amount of uncertainty that comes with your estimate. You might have got a bad point in the soup. You might have happened to get people who are uh, doing extremely poorly on your test, for example. Another way to look at this is uh, analogies of astronomy. I'll come back to the astronomy example a lot today, uh, analogy a lot today, because most statistical procedures that we still deal with today came from astronomy. Some of the initial uh, estimates using the normal curve came from error in our estimates of how far planets and stars are, are deviating. And so when you, when you think of it in terms of doing astronomy, it, you, could do, you can observe the stars, observe the planets with your naked eye, even binoculars. In fact, Gal Galileo's telescopes were not that much more powerful than current binoculars today. But he was able to discover some of the most important things about our solar system. They happen to be big things, Jupiter, Jupiter's moons, uh, things like that. So just like the sampling of astronomy, um, it's, we'll be able to see large things with small sample sizes. We'll be able to see the big planets, things close up. For things further away, we're going to need big telescopes like an astronomy. And it would be nice if we all had access to the Keck, but we don't. So we work with what we have. 
And again, it's working with um, the precision and how much, how precise we need to be. And there's always going to be a trade-off of uh, do we need to be within five, five percent, ten percent, five seconds? So there's a cost of those precision. Okay, should be a pretty comfortable base to find everybody's background and the scores. Mean, not a problem here. This is a measure of central tendency. Statisticians like to call it just to make it more confusing, but. It's, it's a measure of the middle. Here's, I've got an 85 men's from North America sample of 85 men's height. So the average is about five foot 10 inches right there. I think it's 174 centimeters. Um, and so it, it provides us the center. So that's one critical ingredient we need when we want to describe our sample of data that we're using to estimate the population. The other important thing we need is how spread out it is, the variability. And to use the measure of variability, we use um, a different measure, standard deviation. And most of you are obviously are familiar with the standard deviation, but what I've got here is a way to visualize it. If we wanted to, I've got 14 um, samples from that larger sample of heights here. And so we've got that average of 5 foot 10 inches. But we want to say, I want to be able to describe how varied the, the points are. One thing we could do is we could subtract the smallest person in that sample from the largest person in that sample. And that's called the range. But it's a measure of the extremes, and it's not really giving us the average difference each value is from the mean. So it's not really an average measure of variability, which is what we're, we're hoping for. Um, another thing we could do is we could subtract each value from the mean, take each value, subtract it, and then add all those up. So the negative values we add up, those are people below the mean. We add up the positive values, those are people that are taller than the mean, and we get zero. And anything divided by anything, zero divided by anything is zero, so that's not that's really just working backwards from the mean. Another thing we could do is take the absolute value of each, get rid of those negative values so they don't cancel each other out. And this is actually something that's called the mean absolute deviation. It's something that's not used in statistics as much, but it does work. And it gives us some measure of variability. What's, what else can we do to get rid of the negatives? I have some squares. Square. So we, that's right, we could square the values. And when we square the values, it has a way of accentuating the outliers. But by taking the square, we're literally talking in terms of distances here. It's literally a square. We add up an area of a square. That area of the square plus that area of the square plus that area of the square. So we're, we're thinking in terms of square distances now. So we add all that up. We don't have a zero problem. We divide it by the sample size. It gives us 19. Well, what's 19? That's the average squared distance to the mean. Well, what does that mean if you tell me what an average square distance? I know what it is. Um, it's hard to interpret. Well, this is called the variance, the average square distance. So to get a more intuitive measure, instead of taking all four sides, what can we do to get just one side? What mathematical procedure? <coughs> square root. So we take the square root of 19, which is the same thing as just one side. That's the standard deviation. It's just one side. It's the square root of the variance. Most people got that right on the quiz. And there's our average difference each value is from the mean. The mean and the standard deviation are the two fundamental measures that we can describe almost any population. And at least certainly the ones we're going to be talking about today. So far so good? Feeling good? That was the easy stuff. Okay, good.